Speaker, the findings of this interim report are so unequivocal that, I've, that I had assumed that the member for Fairfax would grasp them. However, <laughs> however, thank you for the laughter from the other side. <laughs> however, I, it seems that I overestimated his commitment to facts and science. <laughs> to the Honourable Member for Hunter. Thank you, Mr Speaker. On behalf of the Select Committee on Nuclear Energy, I present the Committee's interim report incorporating dissenting reports for the inquiry into nuclear power generation in Australia, together with the minutes of the proceedings, and I ask Leave of the House to make a short statement in conjunction with this. Is Leave granted? Colin Gibson. Thank you, Speaker. Leave is granted. Call the Member for Hunter. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I present the committee's report titled Interim Report for the Inquiry into Nuclear Power Generation in Australia. The establishment of this committee in October 2024 signalled a critical moment in Australia's ongoing debate on energy policy. As we navigate a rapidly evolving landscape, it is our responsibility to ensure that Australians pursue the most effective, affordable and sustainable energy solutions. Our mandate was clear to investigate and report on potential development or deployment sorry, of nuclear power generation in Australia, including the feasibility of small modular reactors. This was not an ideolo ideological exercise, nor should it ever be. Rather, it was a rigorous, evidence-based exploration of whether nuclear power is a viable and practical option to meet Australia's energy needs both now and into the future. Our goal was to examine the facts, assess the costs, and determine whether nuclear energy is compatible with Australia's economic and environmental objectives. Through extensive consultation, expert testimony and in-depth analysis, the committee has arrived at a definitive conclusion. Nuclear power is not the right choice for Australia. The evidence is overwhelming, Speaker. Nuclear energy is too slow to build, too expensive to implement and would drive up power prices for Australians. Simply put, it is not the best option for our future energy needs. Even under the most optimistic projections, the first nuclear power station in Australia would not be operational before the mid-2040s. That's two decades from now, Speaker. And that's assuming an entirely smooth process, free from regulatory hurdles, legal challenges and unexpected cost blowouts. If history is any guide, International nuclear projects suggest that delays and budget overruns are the norm, not the, not the uh, exception. One of the most critical considerations in this inquiry is timing. Australia's coal-fired power stations are already being phased out, with many scheduled for closure by the operators and owners of those power stations within the next decade. A transition to alternative energy sources must be in place before these closures occur to ensure that energy security and affordability for all Australians. The reality is that nuclear energy will not be ready in time to replace these outgoing power stations. The construction and commissioning of nuclear power plants requires extensive planning, regulatory approvals and infrastructure development. Even in countries with existing nuclear expertise and supply chains, projects take well over a decade to complete. Australians which currently has, Australia, sorry, which currently has no nuclear power industry would face even greater delays. By the time a nuclear power plant is operational in Australia, if it ever is, our existing coal fleet would have been decommissioned, leaving a massive energy gap that cannot be ignored. This gap needs to be filled with reliable, cost-effective and rapidly deployable solutions such as renewables, storage technology and backed up by gas. Betting on nuclear means gambling with our energy future, risking blackouts and higher energy costs due to supply shortfalls. Throughout the inquiry, it became evident <coughs> that proponents of nuclear energy, sorry, <coughs> sorry about that, proponents of nuclear energy, including the member for Fairfax and other LNP members of the committee and, and on the other side, have consistently undermined and questioned the scientific evidence presented by reputable institutions such as AEMO, APANSA and the CSIRO. Yeah. Rather than engaging in a genuine debate based on facts and expert analysis, 
they have sought to cast doubt on well-established research that highlights the financial, technical and environmental challenges of nuclear energy. The CSIRO's GenCost report, widely regarded as the most comprehensive and independent assessment of energy costs in Australia, makes it clear that nuclear energy is significantly more expensive than renewables. The report outlines that small modular reactors, which the opposition continues to champion, remain unproven at scale with no commercially, commercially operational examples anywhere in the world. Despite this, the member for Fairfax and his colleagues have dismissed the CSIRO, CSIRO's findings, claiming that the costs are made up and misleading. They have chosen to ignore the overwhelming global evidence that nuclear power is both cost prohibitive and too slow to deploy. Mm, yep. Instead, they have relied on cherry-picked data from nuclear industry lobbyists, <sighs> presenting an unrealistic picture of nuclear energy's viability in Australia. This disregard for independent science is deeply concerning. Australia's energy policy must be driven by evidence, not an ideology. Yeah. When policymakers attack institutions like the CSIRO simply because their findings do not align with their political agenda, they undermine public trust in scientific research and jeopardise Australia's transition to a clean energy future. Yeah. Speaker, the findings of this interim report are so unequivocal that I, have, that I had assumed that the member for Fairfax would grasp them. However, <laughs> however, Sadly thank no. you for the laughter from the other side. <laughs> however, I, it seems that I overestimated his commitment to facts and science. <laughs> Rather than confronting the reality, he and his colleagues prefer to take Australians on a fantasyful journey, one that leads us to nuclear power utopia that exists only in their imagination. Let's be clear, Speaker. Nuclear power in Australia is not a serious policy option. No. It's a distraction from real energy solutions. Yes. The committee undertook extensive consultation process, holding hearings across Australia over a period of 19 days and reviewing 857 written submissions. Mm. This thorough engagement with experts, stakeholders and communities reinforced what we already knew. Starting a nuclear energy sector from scratch in Australia is, a is not just a daunting challenge, it's impractical, it's impractical and an unnecessary one. Mm. One of the most pressing issues the report addressed is cost. Mm. It, is clear that, it is clear why private investors remain hesitant to commit to nuclear, long construction times, excessive capital costs and uncertain returns mm. make nuclear a financial gamble. Mm. If the private sector sees nuclear as a bad investment, why should Australian taxpayers be forced to foot the bill? That's right. Testimony from the Smart Energy Council suggests that the cost could reach an eye-watering $600 billion and potentially even more. For context, that is more than, the entire, the, that is more than Australia's entire annual federal budget Ugh. that we just handed down yesterday. That is more money that could be spent on upgrading our transmission networks, expanding battery storage and accelerating the rollout of renewables, investments that would deliver results far sooner and at a fraction of the cost. Mm. It is deeply concerning that those advocating for nuclear power have failed to provide Australians with any clarity on key details of their proposal. Yeah, shameful. Their policy is riddled with uncertainties and devoid of any practical solutions. In recent weeks, we've seen Liberal Party members and candidates have quietly removed references to nuclear power from their websites. <laughs> They're not talking about it. They're scared to talk about it. It appears that they too have came to terms with reality. Speaker, their nuclear dream is in a meltdown. They are not happy with the path that their leader and shadow ministers are taking. The member for Gippsland. Now that they've seen the interim report on, uh, on nuclear energy, they realise it won't be ready in time to help Australian workers or to keep our, afford our power affordable. Speaker, they know it will drive up electricity prices. But they can't tell us how much it will cost. They can't say how long it will take. They can't say how much water it will use. Yeah. They can't say whether, where all the reactors will go besides the seven sites suggested. They can't even tell us what reactors they're actually going to use. Mm. There's a lot of can'ts in this policy, Speaker, but there's not a lot of cans, I can tell you that. <laughs> speaker, the conclusion of this report is clear as it is compelling. If we want reliable, affordable and sustainable power, Nuclear power is not the option. Right. It is definitely not the answer for Australia. Yeah, yeah. 
The technology is too slow, too costly and too risky. Australia has better, faster and more cost-effective alternatives to meet its energy, de energy demands. Mm. The government must now act decisively to invest in renewable storage and grid infrastructure, the technologies that will deliver affordable, clean and reliable energy that Australians deserve. Yeah. Yeah. Speaker, can I finish by just saying thank you to all the committee members that were on this, thank you to the Deputy Chair. We did have an enjoyable time going around and doing this uh, committee. A massive thank you to all of our staff members and uh, a huge thank you to the staff of the committee secretariat for all their work, uh, what they did in a very short and demanding schedule that we had. A huge thanks to Kate, Antonia, Ash, Kimberly and Cathy for all their work. And Speaker, I commend this report to the House. Thank you. Yeah.